Ayurvedic care of the ears is very important because the ears are a delicate organ of hearing and we want to preserve them. We want to improve our hearing ability. Uh, the ear also uh, maintains our sense of balance. Our balance system is in the ear. Ears are easily infected uh, and they're very sensitive to cold and dampness. So we want to pay attention to them. We want to know how to take care of them. Uh, the ear is divided into three parts. The outer part, uh, the uh, middle ear, and the inner ear. So sound waves and vibrations enter through the outer ear and all those channels are there to help catch sound. And they travel uh, down the auditory canal and strike the eardrum. So here's a picture of the eardrum, this yellow uh, disc here. And this eardrum uh, vibrates these small little bones. Ossicle, uh, ossicles are the three small bones, the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. And these amplify sound and send the sound waves to the inner ear uh, and into a fluid-filled hearing organ called the cochlea. And that fact that that is a fluid-filled uh, organ is going to play into the Ayurvedic pathogenesis of ear issues uh, being associated with uh, the quality and quantity of fluids. In the inner ear now, that organ, uh, in the, with the vibration, they're called the cochlea, uh, it resembles a snail shell a, a bit, like a snail, and uh, the vibrations push against uh, specialized cells known as hair cells, and uh, they turn vibrations into electrical nerve impl in impulses, which is really a kind of genius thing. And then you also see here the balance system is a sort of the upper right of this, the upper left of this snail here. Um, you see that there's all these little channels there that can uh, that can help us with uh, balancing. Then there's the eustachian tube. The eustachian tube is uh, this canal from the nasopharynx, from basically the cavities in the in the upper throat and be in the nasal passages uh, that connect to the ear. And the reason why we need that canal is to uh, control air pressure in the middle ear. It basically ensures that the air pressure in the inner ear is equal to the air pressure in the outer ear, right? Because this drum here, this uh, that we have sort of as a seal between the inner ear and the outer ear and to make sure that pressure is equalized you need a canal on the other side uh, so the eustachian tube is usually closed but it opens when yawning swallowing or chewing and that's going to turn out to be really important for babies who are flying in airplanes because or you flying in an airplane um or any situation where air pressure is changing dramatically, you might need to pop your ears. Uh, if you've ever felt that sensation before, you, you it's like a little pop. And uh, if you go scuba diving, if you're driving up and down a mountainside, uh, you may need to pop your ears. And you do that by yawning, swallowing, or chewing. Well, ba it's hard to tell that to a baby. I have a 11-week-old uh, son. Uh, little John, and he doesn't know how to make his ears pop. And so if we go um, on a plane trip, which we're actually doing uh, later this evening, he, he, he'll he be uh, crying and he'll have some ear pain uh, when uh, during landing and takeoff. And to prevent this, what, uh, what my wife Natalie will do is nurse him or give him a bottle and that swallowing uh, will help equalize the pressure because it'll open up the eustachian tube. Uh, it's also uh, meant, uh, worth mentioning as part of the anatomy that hearing is associated with ether element in Ayurveda. Um, let's talk about the pathogenesis of ear issues. The ears are very sensitive to an excess or deficiency in rasa. And generally, that's what we're dealing with when we're dealing with ear issues is uh, rasadatu. 
So in kapha individuals or when kapha is high and uh, the, lymph, the lymph or blood plasma is very rich and sweet, that, leads to, that can lead to ear infections. Uh, if, the, if a person has high vata uh, with dryness in their body, then the lymph will be depleted. It will be the opposite of sweet. Uh, and that's rasadatu kashe, that's called, right? Rasadatu vridhi is sweet, rich uh, blood plasma. Rasadatu kashe is depleted uh, lymph. And if a person has their has depleted lymph, they can be sensitive to loud noises, even uh, tinnitus or ringing in the ear. So generally, we're going to be looking at rasadatu or the lymphatic, uh, the lymph, the qualities of the lymph uh, to determine what's going on there with the ear. I, what is Ayurveda care for ear infections? Uh, let's talk about the causes first and then we'll get to some of the remedies. Uh, ear infection is usually caused by bacterial or viral infection affecting the middle ear and it uh, coincides with painful inflammation and fluid buildup. So, um, the inner ear is f actually filled with fluid, and then there's this area here, the middle ear, also, um, can, is, are the parts that can get affected. And when the uh, ear is infected, the eustachian tube uh, sweat can become swollen and blocked and fail to drain. Generally, when there's an infection, there's stagnancy somewhere, right? There, there's fluids that can't move, can't drain, and that stagnancy uh, creates a ripe environment for bacteria to grow. Uh, and in this case, it's the eustachian tube getting blocked that causes the lack of fluid flow. And the blocking of the eustachian tube causes pressure in the ear to start, and that can, uh, and, and in the end, the blocking, as I said, creates infection. Ear infection can be a complication of allergies, colds, sinus infection, or cha even changes in air pressure. So that all those things can trigger um, the blockage of the eustachian tube. Cold weather, in general, aggravates the ear. So ears need warmth. We always have to remember that. Rich, sugary, fatty foods like dairy, wheat, and carbs aggravate kapha. They make the blood sweet and very attractive to um, infectious bacteria. So we're looking at causes of the eustachian tube getting blocked, but also the propensity to infection. If a person has aggravated kapha dosha, are eating lots of rich, sweet, fatty foods that can increase mucus congestion in the area, which could also block uh, the flow, smooth, easy flow of fluids. Children are especially prone to ear infections. And why is that? Because the eustachian tube is nearly horizontal. Even in this photo, look at the difference in terms of the height of the head between the ear and the mouth for this adult. And you see here that the ear is basically at the level of the nose, and the mouth is a few inches down. There's some nice drainage there. Now let's take a look at this baby here. Look at the difference between um, uh, the height of the ears in relation to the mouth. And so these babies have nearly horizontal eustachian tubes that just don't drain as well. Babies are also, uh, children in general, are in the kapha stage of life, which means they're more prone to infection. So if your child gets repeated ear infections, consider removing wheat and dairy from their diet. And also, by the way, seeing a chiropractor because poor alignment um, in the neck uh, can cause uh, disruption in circulation and lymphatic drainage, which can increase uh, ear infections. Let's look at some uh, remedies for ear infection. Antibiotics may be necessary. Uh, it's not quite, antibiotics isn't a really a lifestyle thing, but we didn't have another category to put it in. Um, but antibiotics may be necessary. 
uh, untreated ear infections can cause permanent damage to the ear canal. So just remember, it's a serious thing. Uh, so notice when symptoms start and try to prevent development. Uh, be, be paying attention. Um, if you have a cold and you notice that there's uh, pressure buildup in your ear, uh, start to take action. In general, keep your ears warm. Wear a hat and scarf. Keep your ears dry, especially after a uh, shower or swimming pool. And, um, and use a warm compress outside the, on the outside of the affected ear. Once infection has started, you're not only going to pacify kapha, but also pitta uh, to reduce inflammation and fluid buildup. So you're going to avoid things that would cause inflammation. Uh, the things that are aggravating, pitta aggravating foods like chili peppers. You know they're just going to heat up your ears, and heat to the ears can be good. But if the infection is there, um, you just don't want to aggravate uh, pitta. Heat is fine there, but you don't want to aggravate pitta itself. Um, yeah. A remedy for ear uh, infection is to saw is to chop up and saute one clove of garlic in one ounce of olive oil or sesame oil, then strain and cool until lukewarm, and to pour that oil into the ear. The garlic has antimicrobial compounds. You can also flush the ear with an ear syringe using a mixture of one pint of water to a half teaspoon baking soda or hydrogen peroxide. You can. Um, Fill the ear canal with four ounces of water, uh, and uh, th that including us the squeeze the juice from a wedge of one uh, lemon, and you you fill the ear canal with that. Uh, Rebecca, one of our teachers, says that she was developing an ear infection, but had to take a flight in a few days, and was nervous that she might have to cancel the trip, so she used lemon juice in the ear canal. And after 24 hours, the pain reduced significantly and she was able to fly without any issues. Some other herbs. Uh, a Vedanga infused oil. Vedanga is one of the best antimicrobials in the Ayurvedic uh, uh, herbs, among Ayurvedic herbs. Uh, you can also take lymphatic movers. Uh, generally, we, these will, uh, in fact, bayberry is a strong lymphatic mover for the head. It kind of dilates all of the blood vessels in the head and gets uh, your, all the fluids moving, which is good for ear infections. My daughter, Carmela, had an ear infection and we used uh, drops of olive oil infused with uh, chickweed in her ear and that was uh, helpful within two hours. Uh, red root, mangista, turmeric are other lymphatic movers. Let's talk about the Ayurvedic perspective on earwax buildup. First of all, a certain amount of earwax is essential and healthy. It protects against bacteria and has antifungal properties. But if it builds up excessively, it can cause uh, balance loss, especially in older adults. Ear, we have a term for earwax in Ayurveda. It's called karna mala. Karna means ear. Mala means a waste product of the ear. So earwax is basically, in Ayurveda, waste product of the ear. Uh, uh, some of the causes, aging, can worsen earwax buildup. Wearing hearing aids or a headset all day can increase earwax buildup. Uh, cleaning ears with Q-tips can cause wax to become impacted or blocked. Here's an interesting fact. Um, the... Earwax is considered to be a waste product of, mu of muscle tissue, of mumsa datu. So a diet that's high in meats generally creates more earwax. Meat is generally muscle tissue. So any food that increases muscle tissue can increase earwax. So high protein foods and kapha provoking foods also, by the way. Um, yeah. If you have serious case of earwax and it's very impacted, the doctor may remove the earwax with a small 
a plastic spoon called a curette or through gentle suction and they, they will avoid the use of q-tips right which just pushes it in you can try softening the earwax by applying a few drops of hydrogen peroxide solution once um, uh, the earwax is softened you can use warm water to irrigate the ear canal and uh, flush it out so soften first then irrigate you can also do a practice called oleation of the ears carna porina which loosens the earwax and we'll talk about that in a bit a diet to reduce earwax well you want a light kapha pacifying diet Earwax is oil, wax is oil, essentially. So you want to reduce kapha and avoid uh, excess consumption of heavy meats. And then we've, uh, you can fill the ears with sesame oil. Uh, taking trichotu and honey internally will um, can be helpful to reduce earwax because honey scrapes fat and trichotu is a cardiac stimulant that gets your circulation up. Ringing in the ears is generally caused by damage to the middle ear. And here's a picture of the ear canal where there's the eardrum and the bones that connect the eardrum to the cochlea is, um, so this middle ear, if there's damage in this area, that's what causes ringing in the ear. Um, the uh, damage to the middle ear can be caused by recurring infections, loud noise, trauma, etc. There are n numerous things that can cause it. Uh, and the first is excessive noise exposure. When you have metal against metal, such as, uh, you know, I remember doing some construction work on my house and taking a hammer and banging on a metal crowbar. And that hammer bang on the crowbar is extremely harsh on the ears because it has a lot of very high frequency noises. And so you really have to wear earplugs when you do, when you uh, are in the construction industry in general to protect uh, your ears and that's exactly what I did when I was doing that project if you go to uh, concerts don't stand near the huge speakers that they have and even wear earplugs if you need at the concert at the concert soldiers in active combat may um, have explosions near their ear and uh, that can uh, cause ringing in the ear later and any kind of trauma to the ear can cause uh, ringing in the ear Ringing in the ear increases with age. Generally, um, tinnitus or ringing in the ear is associated with hearing loss and hearing problems. Uh, and uh, hearing these hearing problems incre generally increase with age. The functioning of nerve fibers in the ears declines. And, um, and there's other degenerative changes that can lead to ringing in the ears. So it, uh, ringing in the ears is generally considered to be a vata condition. Head and neck injuries can cause ringing in the ears, uh, which is the case for 10% uh, of pe individuals with tinnitus. And people who've had head and neck injuries uh, tend to have more severe cases of tinnitus. If you have uh, TMJ, which is a, a disorder in the jawbone uh, where it connects to the head, you're more likely to develop tinnitus. But, but no one's exactly sure why TMJ and tinnitus uh, correlate. A buildup of earwax that it gets impacted in the ear can cause damage to the, to the ear. Uh, generally in Ayurveda, uh, ear, ringing in the ears is considered to be um, caused by ama and a sign that the doshas are acutely aggravated. Uh, it can also be a sign of high vata dryness and depletion of bone tissue. Right in the middle ear, what do we see? These three bones. Well, depletion in bone tissue can uh, cause problems then uh, that lead to ringing in the ears. So this is what we're looking at. Ama, aggravated doshas, high vata and dryness, and depletion of bone tissue. Remember that, uh, always remember that the ears are heavily affected by the quality of rasa datu, the lymphatic, uh, the uh, qualities of the lymph. If it's thick, rich, and sweet, 
You get kapha ear conditions like uh, ear infections. If rasa is depleted and the uh, and lacking in sweet taste, uh, then you have more vata disorders and the ear is sensitive to these changes in uh, the qualities of your lymphatic system. A low pitch ringing in the ear is considered to be more kapha caused by swelling uh, and congestion in the ears. And a high pitch is generally seen to be vata caused by indigestion. So what do you do in Ayurveda to help with ringing in the ears? Well, first, you want to cleanse the bowels to purge toxins. You want to keep the ears clean from excess wax accumulation. Reduce tension in the, in the jaw. In your diet, you want to uh, take measures to reduce constipation so you can reduce ama. Um, you uh, like warm water, easy to digest foods, warm foods, foods that build ojas can help pacify vata. And for your herbs, generally herbs to keep the bowels clean. All right, what about vertigo? which is a sensation of whirling or dizzy uh, dizziness. You may feel like the room is spinning. Um, uh, complications of vertigo include nausea, vomiting, and sweating because your body's like, what is going on? Uh, you may get vertigo when looking down uh, from a height or up from a height. Like if I, if I, when I was a boy, I used to climb trees, and every time I looked up from climbing the tree, I would feel like, whoa, I feel a little dizziness there. So... Uh, that's vertigo. Generally, uh, pathological vertigo is a disturbance in the balance system, the vestibular system. And there are numerous causes, everything from stress, anxiety, low blood sugar, high blood pressure, damage to the middle, to the inner ear and dehydration. In Ayurveda, vertigo is called Brahma. And disturbances in the balance system can be due to any one of the doshas. So when dealing with vertigo, you really have to pinpoint the dosha behind it. Vata type is caused by aging and hearing problems. Pitta type is caused by swelling and inflammation. And kapha type is caused by congestion, congealed fluids, and crystal formation in the inner ear. The inner ear is a fluid-filled um, organ, the cochlea is a fluid-filled organ, and this vertigo uh, happens when there's uh, uh, congested, conge uh, congealed fluids or crystals in the fluids. Um, and uh, yeah, so think about what is the dosha behind your vertigo. Most cases of vertigo resolve themselves. Avoid things that would specifically promote it, provoke it, like uh, high, going to heights. And make sure you sit down immediately and whenever you feel dizzy and get your head to the floor. What you don't want is to get dizzy and then lose consciousness and fall down and injure yourself. It happens to people all the time and creates a really serious injury. Depending on the cause, you uh, you can deal with the cause. Like if your cause is high blood pressure, then take steps to reduce blood pressure. Uh, stay well hydrated because dehydration uh, thickens fluids. And generally avoid caffeinated drinks. A good herb for vertigo is bringarage because it tonifies vata and the nervous system. Um... And uh, that's helpful for vertigo. It reduces dizziness. And ginkgo is another herb that's used for vertigo because it improves blood flow to the brain. Imagine bayberry would be another herb that would be useful for vertigo just because it's so good for blood flow to uh, the upper body and especially the head. Ayurveda offers many wonderful techniques for general care of the ears. Karnapurna is perhaps the most famous ear care technique in Ayurveda. And Karnapurna means filling the ears with oil. Karna means ear and Purna means filling. And here's a picture of someone receiving Karnapurna treatment. 
Carnaporna is very vata pacifying. It's relaxing and very grounding. Sesame oil, it, uh, one of the oils used for Carnaporna, is warm, unctuous, and has heavy properties that, um, that will help you feel very relaxed and uh, ground a reactive nervous system. Oil in general nourishes nerves and bone tissues, and the ears have a lot of both. Oils of food for the nervous system, and, um, and that's why oil is especially good for the ears. Some of the benefits of Carnaporna also include optimizing hearing function, preventing hearing loss, even strengthening the voice, jaw, and head. Carnaporna cleans the ear. The ears are always open and it's, real, and it's easy for dirt and dust to enter. Carnaporna is also helpful for ringing in the ears it can soften earwax for easy removal, and it's um, helpful for lockjaw or TMJ. Here's how you do it. You basically fill the ear with warm oil, usually sesame oil, and then you massage around the ear. There's a wonderful variation as well, where you saute a clove of garlic in one ounce of sesame oil. Chop up the clove into small pieces, um, saute it in the one ounce of sesame oil, strain out the pieces of garlic, and cool till it is lukewarm. And these aromatic compounds in the garlic are very penetrating. Uh, and so it's a particularly great way to do carnaporna. If you have an ear infection, don't do carnaporna. Oil generally increases infections. However, sesame oil with garlic is an exception to that. Uh, because the garlic is such a strong antimicrobial. Also, um, avoid carna porina if you have sinus congestion. In general, if your eustachian tube is blocked, you don't want to do carna porina. Let's go over some general treatments of the other general treatments of the ears. Uh, first, lifestyle treatments. Keep your head warm. The ears love warmth. Gargling, chewing, and swallowing assists in the disposal of earwax and clearing the middle ear because it opens the eustachian tube, and that's beneficial for ear infections. Massage frequently around your ear. Place your hands on your, uh, on your cheeks, uh, basically right in front of the ear where the jaw joint is. Open and close your mouth while massaging the area. And you can stick fingers in, you stick your fingers into your neck behind your earlobe, and then open and close your jaw again, massaging that joint. So you can massage your cheek near the tragus while opening and closing the mouth. Pull your ear up, pull it down, pull it sideways, experiment. All that can be helpful for the ear. See a chiropractor if you need to realign your neck or shoulders to help with lymphatic drainage of the upper body. And that can help with ear health. You can see a yoga therapist for good posture because good posture opens up the lymphatic system of the head also and that helps with ear drainage. Use a neti pot to clear sinus congestion and the eustachian tube. Here's another technique. You can place half a raw onion outside the ear. The intensity of the onion uh, can be lessened by roasting for 30 seconds if it's too much for you. But basically, the uh, um, compounds in a raw onion are strongly vasodilating and improve the circulation um, and flushing of fluid from the ear. And that's great for ear health. Some herbs that could be good for uh, the ears. Uh, we have our immune stimulating herbs. Uh, some antibacterial herbs like turmeric and neem. Antimicrobial herbs uh, also, vidanga and uh, shatavari. Decongestants such as trichotillo with honey and black pepper, and your anti-inflammatories like uh, neem and turmeric.